So at the chatbot arena, I came across I'm also a bit GPT to chatbot. So I'm going to ask it to create an animation of a light bulb on the top right uh, of an HTML page here. You can read it in detail, which we can which we can use to toggle light and dark mode. I also ask it to put a little cord underneath it, like an old-fashioned light bulb, and we can pull. Let's see what this will provide us, and then we'll see. And the other model is Gemini 1.5 Pro, so we'll see how they both do. So I, first I copied Gemini 1.5 Pro. I just wanted to see it. This is what it looks like. Yeah, we can. This actually works, but I can't pull on the cord. Let's try the also a good GPT. We can see that also a good GPT-2 wrote actually quite a lot of code, almost twice as much. Let's see how this looks. Okay, this is interesting. All right, it works better. You can't really pull on it, but this looks much more like a light bulb, almost like a lamp. Can we pull on it? No. Yeah, I'm going to send uh, another prompt here. This I said this is great, but the cord pulling animation, like an old fashioned lamp where we can pull the cord, cord will stretch and bounce back. I saw something like this on Twitter, so let's see what happens. Gemini kind of just saw this. It didn't return the full code, so I'm not even going to try that. Let's go ahead and grab GPT-2's answer. Paste it here, so it wrote this time 160 lines of code. Let's see if that made any difference. Oh, okay. Now, actually, do you see this little animation? That's cool. Let me zoom in. Now, when we click on it, it actually stretches that. That's really cool, actually. So this is pretty awesome. I'm going to ask it to actually, I, I ask, this is awesome, but can we make the cord controlled by mouse click drag event? I guess I should have mentioned this early on. And click drag should work in multiple directions, not just downward direction. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's grab the new code and paste it here. Let's see what happened. Oh, sorry, actually, I didn't properly copy paste it. Now we have 200 lines of code. No errors. Uh, let's refresh. And we can pull it down. Look at that. I know it's not perfect. I can't let go. It worked the first time. Let's refresh again. It lets me pull it second time. Oh, yeah. Like that. Kind of. Click drag. Well, this is pretty awesome, in my opinion. Pull this event. Let's go ahead and rate it. Okay. Let's try something else. This is what I'm asking. I'm asking, let's create lots of mini circles, which is arranged around the larger circle which are rotating around the circle. They also randomly change color slowly. If we enter into this larger circle without a mouse cursor, and the closer we are to the center of the larger circle, the smaller circles should spin faster and change their colors faster. And more we are close to the perimeter of the circle, slower spin spinning and the color change. When we are outside of the circle with our mouse, the spinning and the color change should stop. This is actually kind of contradictory to what we said right here, but let's see what happens. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours over three projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well. Well, we are getting the code back and also Gemini is going to answer us as well. I do want to say that I love how it never refuses. doesn't matter the complexity of your task. So that's that's actually great. And I've heard rumors on Twitter that this just may be a very small model, maybe possibly an open source model, which is artificially slowed down. So we'll see. Actually, it'll be an exciting rest of this year for sure. Okay, they're both done. Uh, since this is a newer project, let's give Gemini a chance. Let's copy this, bring it here, and go back. Okay, that thing is happening. Some strange stuff happens sometimes. This is Gemini's code. Okay, let's grab the GPT-2's code. Paste it. Again, this is a longer code, about 40 lines longer. Let's see if it did it. Okay, this is what we get. It's not exactly what we ask for. Yeah, this is not what we ask for. Although, dynamic is there. Maybe the prompt was too complex. I realize that if you ask for too much, too quickly, it tends to fail. Let's do it one little step at a time. Okay, let's start with something really simple. Oh, I timed out. Okay, let me go ahead and find it and save that. Um, this happens to you. Just refresh or re -go, reload the page and let me try to find the model. Okay, in the first try, I got I'm a good GPT-2 chatbot. I think the previous one was also, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and try it here. 
Okay, let's try this. And then in the other model is Cloud 3 Opus. We'll take a look at that as well. I said, let's create an HTML, CSS, JS animation in a single. Now, this is interesting because we are not asking for a canvas animation. So it's actually harder. We, we are asking it to do it in HTML and CSS. As you can see, there's a lot of CSS classes here in the previous example. So uh, let's see how it goes. We are asking for uh, small circles arranged around a circle as they rotate and shift their colors slowly against the dark background. Let's see what happens. Actually, Opus is done. Let's try it real quick. Okay, Opus wrote 62 lines of code. And this is what we get. It's kind of nice, actually. Uh, however, they're, they're not changing their colors or anything. Let's see what GPT-2, good GPT-2 did. Again, it's uh, just uh, five more lines of code. And OK, this is maybe more closer to what we were looking for. Let's give it a rating and then another prompt. OK, we have a new prompt. Let's send this real quick and take a look. We would like the speed of the spinning and color change to be affected by mouse movements on the page. The closer we are to the center, the faster, and the farther away from the center, the mouse is, the slower. Let's see what happens. It's opus, opus, so lines of code. Nothing's really happening. And this is uh, GPT-2, 96 lines of code. And OK, it's, it's definitely reacting to the mouse movement, but not exactly as we we hoped okay let's try something else we're going to actually ask ask them to create uh, a web page to create a sample website with images from splash not a splash website splash.com or unsplash i should say i totally made a mistake let's see if it's actually okay it's using unsplash anyway uh, that's my bad but uh, to create a, a website with images from unsplash but everything in the web page should be transparent and Transparent glass effect, make the web page as beautiful as you can. So they're both having a go at it. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, this is Opus with lines of code. Okay, this this is actually nice. Look at that. Explore more. I'm actually surprised. Okay, let's see. The GPT-2 is still writing. And it's <laughs> retrieved quite a lot of images. Almost done. It's going to be an interesting comparison. Okay, we have 39 lines of code this time. And this is the website we got. Yeah. It's not bad, although the arrangement is a little weird, but this is definitely more complex. That's nice. Okay, let's go ahead and say, please think carefully about the arrangement of elements and make it more complex and more beautiful. You have full creative control. Let's wait for that. Okay, actually, Opus got cut off. This can happen sometimes, so it just stopped right here. Uh, but GPT-2 is still going. It's, it's written a lot of code, um, HTML. And it just got done. I'm so glad it finished because when this happens, we normally have to copy the last part and ask it to continue from there. Okay, we have 200 lines of HTML, and this is what it looks like. You can't really click on them, but there's a glass effect and it says stunning nature photography. It's really nice. I like it. Okay, we're asking for a beautiful infinite mammal broad fractal zoom in HTML canvas, make it colorful, beautiful, and elegant. I also added keep the JavaScript and HTML. Let's see what they come up with. Let's first take a look at Opus, 79 lines of code. So, okay, well, something is happening, but maybe we're crashing. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and grab the code for GPT-2. Paste it here. This is 84 lines of code, and here we go. Maybe, okay, this is more like it, but maybe this is not a good idea to render it in the browser. Let's see. We're not getting any errors. Yeah, it's just very slow. We should have asked a uh, pie game or something like that. So that's it. Uh, I guess we'll keep this video short, but they're really good models. I mean, if this is especially a very really small model as GPT-2 was, one and a half billion, it's really, really capable. It's very really interesting indeed. Thank you for watching. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. And some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours over three projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files, so you can get inspiration very quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also, the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.